There are plenty of videos on YouTube of people roasting a chicken with the cob. But what I wanted to find out was if the cob can do a traditional Sunday roast lunch with chicken and roast veg as a complete meal. The smallest chicken I could find at the supermarket was 1.2 kilos and apparently big enough to feed four people. In keeping with the Sunday roast theme, I found this earthenware dish which perfectly fits the cob fenced roast rack at the back of a cupboard and I decided to give it a try. At this stage I was assuming the earthenware pot would retain some heat and compensate for the diminishing output of the charcoal over an hour or two. Standard cob oven set up with the grill rack but I used the large fire basket from the barbecue kit to spread the heat under the grill plate. I used 11 Weber briquettes which is about 500 grams. So what happened? Well the briquettes took 30 minutes to be all grey, the chicken went in 5 minutes after the grill plate and rack went on, and then 30 minutes later I added the potatoes and the carrots. After another 30 minutes the mushrooms went in, and 20 minutes after that I took the aluminium off the top. I checked the chicken after 15 minutes, and again after another 20 minutes, and 25 minutes later there was no heat left from the charcoal, but at least the chicken was cooked, even if the veg wasn't. So the first attempt was close, but it just wasn't close enough. So I had a few things I could change going into the second attempt. I invested £7 in what turned out to be an excellent 10 inch by 2 inch deep aluminium baking tray to replace the oven my pot. I decided to put the chicken on top of the veg and apart from the mushrooms to cook them all for the same time. The smallest chicken I could find at the supermarket claimed to be heavier than the one in the first attempt. Easily solved, I just cut it in two. I decided to use lump wood for this second attempt and I put the weight up to about a 12 briquette equivalent. Took the usual half an hour for the charcoal to become all grey and I put the chicken and veg in as soon as the grill plate and rack were on. I hoped that the aluminium foil would force the heat into the chicken for the first hour. What it also did was stop the ridiculous amount of water from the chicken from evaporating. Why oh why do the supermarkets pump the chicken full of water? Obviously because we're made to think that weight is more important than quality. So rather than leave it for the half an hour, 40 minutes I'd expected, I left it in for another hour to evaporate all the water off. So I didn't get the crispy veg and chicken that I wanted. However, it added a nice flavour as it caramelised the veg, giving everything a sweet and slightly aromatic flavour. So not a total success, but incredibly tasty. And if I hadn't been so hungry, I could probably have got that browning effect with the charcoal heat that was left. I had the other half of the chicken and decided to repeat the second attempt with a couple of modifications. As before, 30 minutes for the charcoal to get going and the chicken went in with the grill plate and the wreck. After 40 minutes I took the foil off and added the mushrooms. There was lots of water from the chicken but the potatoes were almost done. After another 40 minutes I expected it to be done but it was struggling. I gave it another 40 minutes and then that was it but the meat wasn't cooked as well as in the second attempt. So what did I learn? You can cook a Sunday roast chicken lunch in the cob but really it's only going to be for two people. Don't waste money on cheap water plump chickens, go for free range every time. And the Big K lump wood was inconsistent and not for the first time. And that's it, a bit more fine tuning to do and it should be perfect. <laughs>